Hello everyone. Isotope's RX-11 has hit the streets. RX is the industry trailblazer for audio repair and enhancement. Powered by machine learning technology, RX's comprehensive suite of tools tackles everything from common audio problems to the trickiest of sonic rescues for music, audio post-production, podcast production, and content creation. Go to isotope.com and receive your 10% discount on all their software using code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All at I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. Justin, what's happening? Joe, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm up in Seattle. Where are you? I'm in Tacoma right now. Oh, yeah. You made it home from tour. Yeah, yeah. I have a little uh, break in between legs, and um, I'm in Tacoma for a couple weeks Mm -hmm. until we start back up again. How was the tour this time around? So far, the first leg was really good. Um, You know, uh, the West Coast is great. I I feel like kind of spoiled in that way where kind of just being out here. It's kind of um, luckily sort of... uh, kind of know what to expect so that was kind of a nice way to start things off yeah um god it was so hot in the south was it oh my gosh it was shocking yeah um but other than that you know it was great people were awesome shows were great cool yeah it was nice nothing nothing crazy happened to anyone in the band or the van so that's great yeah i think that's a that's a win you travel in a van? Yeah, uh, usually just like in a sprinter. Yeah. I like the but, sprinter uh, travel. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, been using like Econo lines for most of my touring life. Yeah. And then um, invested in a sprinter. And uh, especially for this stuff, you know, the traveling at seven people and uh you know the sprinter does sort of allow a little bit of room that the econo line can't yeah kind of (laughs) provide i think there's something about being able to stand up too that's totally game changing that like if you got a five hour drive it kind of turns it into a four hour drive if you can stand up exactly even (laughs) for a moment just like just to stretch the legs for a second it it is game changing yeah so you're in Tacoma. Is that where you grew up? No, you know, I've only been out here for like going on five, six years now. Oh. But, you know, I kind of grew up uh, half in Arizona and then uh, half up in um, like the Seattle area. Oh, okay. And um, kind of grew up going to shows kind of all around the peninsula and, you know, um, the east side too. But like, Grew up going to a lot of shows in Tacoma and Olympia as well. So um, I didn't grow up here, but I have a lot of friends that I grew up with who, yeah. who, who are from here. So it does feel sort of comforting to be uh, having uh, Tacoma as a home base right now. Right. I'm liking Tacoma more and more. It's nice. I, I like it. It's perfect for where my life's at right now. Yeah. What shows were you going to in your youth yeah, you know, I grew up just kind of in the punk and DIY scenes. And mm. so I, I went to a lot of house shows and warehouse shows and UFW hall shows yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, like stuff that was put on by people my age or just a little bit older usually. Sure. It wasn't It wasn't until like later teens or early 20s that I was introduced to more like like venues or or even like um places like the Ver project that like were you know available like resources to you know teens and stuff like that yeah so I, yeah i spent a lot of time kind of just in like makeshift spots and sure you know people's garages and stuff and then when when did you start playing music or did you have any sort of formal training or did you just pick up a guitar or drum set i guess drums are your primary instrument is that right yeah yeah drums are primary and you know i i did like um school band from sixth grade through high school oh you did and and i was like pretty serious about it all all through my like you know school 
schooling. So, um, but you know, it kind of, it was a funny thing where I, I was able to sort of like have access to like teachers and, and people who were, were really, really, um, serious about it but at the same time you know going to these shows and like seeing like the more uh cutty artists kind of like yeah. in the trenches kind of like throwing things together i felt like i was able to sort of get a, a sense of both worlds of like kind of uh, what they both had to offer you know yeah that's fairly similar to my experience growing up and playing music i was really inspired by all the shows i went to and I was pretty serious about playing music and learning music, you know, though I didn't stick with the, the sort of school and the training and stuff for very long. I just took it on my own and got dr drum videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same, you know, and I, I had made that switch too, you know, it just wasn't until after high school, you know, I, right. you know, I think that was kind of a big, a pivotal point for a lot of musicians at that point where it's like, okay, do I really commit to, like, doing this at the college level? And, like, yeah, or do I just see what it can be from here, you know, on my yeah. own? But, but yeah, no, definitely had that similar moment. No Berkeley for us. Yeah, no. Do you know anyone who went to Berkeley? I do, actually. Did they graduate? Uh, you know what? I can't confirm if they did or not. They yeah, did. I can't. I bet they did. But... I, I kind of feel like he maybe did not, yeah. <laughs> but but he is an amazing musician oh, and, and made yeah. some incredible records. And I, I feel like that, yeah, that is a thing I've run into for sure. Yeah, I, it's really funny. Just the, almost ever, I think every person I know who went to Berkeley who is a great musician, I play with some of them and or have. Yeah, and I this whole thing started just because of like, oh, you went to Berkeley. What was it like? Blah blah blah. And every one of them just ended it with like, yeah, it was great or it sucked. And, but, uh, I didn't graduate. And then it's like, oh, you didn't, that's the last person I talked to. So, this is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does sort of like, I mean, those people I like definitely hold in my mind as like a higher sort of caliber of, um, of proficiency within their instrument for sure. But, um, but yeah, it is sort of funny that like, <laughs> man, like, I guess we both ended up in a similar spot regardless. <laughs> yeah, that's the, <laughs> I guess that's the other funny part of it. Yeah. Um, well, uh, man, Grim Iconic Sadistic Mantra, your new record, your sub pop debut. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it is such a great record. Thank you. I've been listening to it a lot. I've been traveling a little bit. It's a good airplane record for sure. Um, it's jam packed full of everything I like. Um, I heard it like Budos band kind of grooves. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. Um, there's uh, lots of punk rock in there and uh, some kind of ESG 99 record era stuff. The other thing I kind of, even listening to your uh, previous record, Aho Sunshine, there's a couple moments. And I don't know if it's because I'm being bombarded by Oasis reunion right now, but mm -hmm. on your records, I I like get this surprise every once in a while. I was like, that, there's like a Brit pop thing in there. Oh, that's cool. I, I don't yeah, know. What, yeah. yeah. Like sometimes it gets anthemic and stuff, but anyways, it's just like everything for me. It's, it's like a perfect record for me. And, um, thank you. It's, thank you. it's without kind of the kitchen sink conversation I'm starting here. It's, it's so concise and kind of feels really, it feels like a realized piece of work. Does it feel that way to you? How is it different than Aho Sunshine? Yeah, you know, I think that like, well, thank you so much. And it does like, it. Uh, I do feel so grateful that it comes off as like a realized piece. I mean, because that's like something going into this process, that, like, like, nothing will feel done unless to me I have that sort of like mm -hmm. feeling behind it that like okay this is like this is the vision you know and I think that like going into both records but specifically this one too like uh I, you know I'm just a big fan of albums too and like as a complete like journey and thing you know and, and, uh, just a, a well-rounded piece of art and 
I, you know, I think that like, that's the kind of thing I want to continue. Mm -hmm. I, I, just the emphasis on an album versus, versus like a single sort of like, you know, artist, which is like great. But yeah, I just, I have never been able to sort of like capture a complete idea within just one, uh, with the one song. I, I like sure. how it is fitting on a record, but like, so I think they both kind of share that sort of vision and, and uh, mission statement, but like, but with, but they differ, you know, I think this one, like so much, I have to like give credit to uh, Seth Manchester, who like I produced the record with mm -hmm. and um, bringing him into the fold and, and having it just be him and I sort of mapping out what to do with this record. Uh, I, I really do credit to him and, um, you know, he was really uh, into what I was able to achieve with Aho Sunshine, specifically recording it all at home and mixing it at home. And, you know, I felt like I had really kind of hit my ceiling as far as like sure. fidelity and also just like workflow. And, um, and, you know, there's certain charms to that, and, and they're definitely on the record, and I those are my favorite pieces of, like, what I was able to do. And, and he he loved those, too, and, and it was really important to him to sort of harness those, keep those, but then also, like, with his studio, Machines with Magnets in Rhode Island, sort mm -hmm. of open it up to this bigger space. So the record was really done in both at home and then also there. Okay. And just figuring out the nuances between like what things we could keep from my home recordings to sort of still hold on to the the little shimmers of lo-fi, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but then also have enough ceiling to where he could really push push it from there i guess that's it i guess that you've you unlocked it by recognizing your ceiling and then having someone kind of expand it for you that's oh that's, totally that's about as healthy as it gets i <laughs> mean I, t to be honest like my like my work setup here at home is like very limited and you know i i like it that way but it is like i'd have to be crazy to think that like i could go any further with it you know sure that's a good lesson for me. <laughs> <laughs> I got to record in about an hour. I'm going to keep that in my mind. It's like, right, that's the basic stuff. I'm going to give, give the reins to someone else. Um, and I read that the Latin music in your life kind of crept in on this record. Is that for the first time? You know, I think like with this much of a heavy hand, definitely first time. I think that like... It's seeped in here and there, but nothing like this. I think this was like at the forefront of the vision board, you know, for mm -hmm. me. And that was something that like when I was first talking with Seth and I was telling him about this, when I had planned, at, yeah. um, like that sort of percussion and that influence was like number one on the list. Like yeah. I wanted okay. to bring that into the fold immediately. And I yeah, planned that for sure. Cool. Well, I love it. And I'd like to play Choya beat. Is that cool? Absolutely. All right. <laughs>
señora. Su álbum titulado Green Light Comic es un reflejo de un estado de ánimo de disolución. Esta noche, debutando en la televisión mexicana, demos la bienvenida a JRCG. Great tune. Thank you. Uh, I like the big chapter change in there. It's cool. Oh, yeah, the outro. I was, I was excited that you played the outro. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. It's it's a big change in the tune, but it, it's great. It's got that a great groove at the end of it. Um, so we were talking a little bit about recording. I'm, I'm curious how you start your recordings. Do you start, like, with a drum groove, or do you start with a noise? or? Yeah, it- you know, it... I do switch it up a little bit, yeah. but it, it is usually like, um, like I'd say 90% of the times I'm starting with drums, mm-hmm. but what I'll usually do, and maybe this is too inside baseball, but like what I no, usually this is the do, inside, like, this is the inside baseball part. So, okay, cool, cool, cool. You can talk about changing the tone of your click track if you like. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's something that I've <laughs> changed. I have done up until recently is i haven't really started with a click which gave me a really big headache with this record Uh but um so basically i will record like probably hours of just drums Mm -hmm. like like just i'll just do like a week of just like oh i'm just gonna play drums and record myself and and then basically do that process uh, maybe I'll even layer drums or whatever, but then later I'll have like stuff to basically like sample. Yeah, gotcha. So I'm just like cutting, I'm just cutting that stuff up and like yeah. piecing it together. And then, you know, if it makes sense or inspires a song from that and I need to like re record it to make it a little bit more, you know, lifelike than yeah. I can, or a lot of times I'll just leave it. But, um, but yeah, usually it starts with the drums. Like, I think that like, you know, maybe you can relate coming from that position too. It's just like, it just feels more natural, more comfortable. And it does sort of like, for me personally, like inspires like a full song more quickly than, you know, starting somewhere else. But, but I do start with bass sometimes, or I do start with synthesizer, but, um, but yeah, more often than not drums. Yeah. And back to you, you just mentioned that sometimes you go back and cut the drums again, which I've had that experience too. All the music I write is pretty simple and linear, but yeah. sometimes it's just like, I'll track everything to a loop I make. But then, like you said, I'll be like, ah, retracking the drums would be so much better. And it always is just a pit in my stomach. I'm just like, I know I can do it, but it just, it gives me so much anxiety to retract drums. with <laughs> with like lining it up yeah and stuff like, that, yeah, like playing yeah. yeah it's funny like um it's something i didn't really think about and then you know a lot of the process with seth is like i went out to rhode island i had everything like pretty much the roadmap of the record and all of like the skeletons of everything out there and he really wanted me to reperform some of the drum stuff and i think because like with the last record, I, I just had done that on my own. I, I guess I'd just become like a lot more com- like comfortable, like playing to myself. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so he had a similar sort of thing where he was like, are you going to be like, okay, doing this kind of thing. <laughs> and then I like, I just did it. Cause I was just like used to it unknowingly. Yeah. And he was just, and he was like, even like, Oh man, okay. This is going to be fine. Yeah. But, yeah. um, but, you know, I'm sure that, like, 
he had to do his magic too on the sure, yeah, vocal just like, side. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Whoa, this is <laughs> great. What'd you do? Nothing. I didn't touch a thing. Exactly. I just, exactly. I just EQ'd him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but no, yeah. I feel like just having this workflow at home by myself has really forced me to like gain the um sort of like practice of that which is yeah. super useful but that's great but well, yeah no, there there is there is some anxiety behind that for sure i guess yeah it. this partnership between you and seth is just uh so so beautifully fruitful um congrats on Absolutely. this record oh thank you so much yeah you know i uh I'm super grateful for his involvement in it. And, you know, I went out there having never met him before mm -hmm. and just through email and we spent a whole week out there just sort of getting to know each other, but also just digging in and yeah, it, it paid off, you know? Yeah. It's killer. Uh, how is it playing these tunes? How do you, how do you play them live? Yeah. That's a whole other side of like, something i never really planned for but is like a whole different animal you know i usually have to like dissect the sessions backwards reworking like i guess just organizing basically to like what is needed instrumentation wise personnel wise because i never make the records with a live band in mind and like i kind of refuse to to be mm -hmm. honest and um and yeah, so it is a bit of a puzzle and I like rely heavily on like, uh, you know, a small group of people that like kind of that's where like that collaboration comes in mm -hmm. as sort of like, okay, this is what this person can do. This is how we can structure this. This is how we can like sample this or whatever. Um, so, so it's nice because like making the records is, is very like hermit mode, insular, but taking it into this live setting it, it is very sort of collaborative and I, and I work really closely with like some close friends to um who really kind of push it to where it needs to be yeah but it's been really awesome because like you know playing them live like or rehearsing them and sorting that out that's the first time i've ever heard these songs yeah perform live. that's got to be fun it's so fun yeah how many people are on stage right now six you know and then seven with the front of house which i like the the front of house person like i heavily like consider part of it too you okay. know just because because of what needs to happen you know wow. in the mix and stuff like that so but yeah so six and then seven yeah oh i gotta see it someday i missed it this Please, time around let me I'll, know. I'll, I'll, I'll find you one of these days you're on a break right now what's next the east coast <sighs> Yeah, so we hit just a little bit of the East Coast on this first leg, flew home, and then we're flying back, mm. hitting more of the East Coast, and then into Canada, okay, and then Midwest, and then pretty much just back to the West Coast. Okay. So just finishing the loop that we started, yeah. pretty much, and getting into Canada a little bit, and yeah, this is kind of the headlining tour behind this record and then like figuring it out from there you know right and you played some shows with mdu mokhtar um, yeah that was so cool yeah what is that i've never seen them but it just seems like such a crazy massive guitar groove so so amazing i mean honestly the drums incredible yeah incredible yeah um no no such a great uh live band and and great people and crew and um you know I, I you never know what to expect as far as like the pairing goes you know i'm sure yeah. gone through that many times but but yeah you know uh it ended up being great i thought that the pairing was really nice and the, their fans were really really kind to me in the in All the right. group and, and um yeah no they were an, an amazing live band it was cool because it was an opportunity to also like flesh out the new record live a little bit before the record came out. So mm -hmm. it was nice. Great. All right. Well, um, congrats again on this record. I'm going to keep listening. And, uh, until I get to see you live, not, I won't stop once I see you live. I said that weird, but, uh, I'm just going to keep listening. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll hopefully see you 
maybe over the winter you'll have a surprise Tacoma show for me or something. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, and, Joe. Of course. And uh, let's trade some drums. That might be fun. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Share some digital drums back and forth. Are you wearing a rock absolutely. candy hat? I am. You can oh barely read it. God. But I've had this hat forever, and I've worn it to shreds, basically broken all over. <laughs> Cool. All right, man. Well, it was great to talk to you. I hope, uh, since we live so close, hope to run into you, see you guys live, and uh, travel safe for the rest of the fall. Might see you in the fall somewhere in the Midwest or something. Thank you, Joe. Let me know. All right. Take care. You too. Bye.